afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Bully. Well, it's the end of a very warm week, well, for most of South Africa. And today in the loft, we have a hot treat for you. We have an absolute legend, Mama Felicia Mabuza Sattel. And she's here to chat to us about her journey this far and her book, Live Your Dream. We also have an injured rugby legend in the kitchen chatting to Jeannie. But later on, we have a live performance from none other than Altido. Thanks, Bonnie. I am indeed. In fact, I am with injured rugby legend Victor Matfield. Welcome to our loft. I mean, I'm so, so disappointed we're not going to be seeing you on the field tomorrow with the All Blacks. Yeah, Jeannie, you know, I'm also very disappointed I won't be seeing me <laughs> there. Do you think that the All Blacks are going to take us, or do you think the Springboks can definitely rise above? Uh, you know, and, and win the World Cup. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Victor Matfield. It is wonderful <laughs> having your gorgeous face on set. And of course, we have Nick Rabinovitz. Welcome again to our loft. We're going to be chatting to you a Thank little you. bit later. Good to be here. About what the EFF. Thank you so much for going to visit us. We'll be chatting in just a little while. Lovely, lovely to ah, see you again. <laughs> Jimmy, ah, yeah. Oh, it's always so nice to see you. <laughs> All right, we're also cooking in the kitchen today with a fantastic, happy human being, Joy. What are we going to be making? So today we are making almond crusted um, scallops with sumac and veg juice. Oh, that sounds absolutely delicious. I love scallops. But for now, let's get back to the couch where Bunny is with our very first guest, Felicia Mabuza Sattel. <laughs> Now, she was South Africa's first talk show host. She is an international award-winning entrepreneur, an inspirational speaker, author, philanthropist, and mother. We're deeply honored to have in our loft a legendary Felicia Mabuza Sattel. Welcome to the loft. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I paid it to say all those great ah. things about me. Thank you couldn't you, pay me enough. <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. I am so proud of you, your success, and more importantly, your book as well. Oh. That touched so many people. So thanks for having me here. It is an honor. It's such an honor. Thank you. Thank mm. you. Right, so let's start in the early years. We've got a lot to get through. Wow. You grew up in Sophia Town. That's right. Many icons and great names have come from that place. What is it about that place that just made it so vibrant and produced so many amazing people? You know, I was a young little girl then. I have vivid memories about Sophia Town. I had vivid memories about singing for Mrs. Mutsielwa and the Manhattan Brothers and Miriam Makeba were on the same Greyhound bus and we'd go to places like Kronstadt and uh, Bloemfontein and wherever yeah. and watching this woman that I admired, Miriam mm -hmm. Makeba, saying one day I'm going to sing like Miriam Makeba. But I was kind of a lead singer too with the tiny tots. I see. There was a band <laughs> called Peter Razan's band. So it was just vibrant Chinese, Indian, Zulu, Sutu, yeah. Afrikaans speaking. We're all together. That's why maybe I can fool around with nearly 11 la official languages. languages yes, <laughs> yep. yes. Uh -huh. Now, your, your grandfather played a big role in your upbringing mm -hmm. and he inspired you in many ways. What do you remember most about him and what are some of the lessons that he taught you that you still hold to today? I remember one thing, in fact, uh, Mr. Nchona in London said to me, he was more British than the British. <laughs> All I know is that we had to go and get ready for dinner every night. It wow. was quite... To wash up and clean up. That's right. And the table was laid every night. We had to help lay the table. And we went through this three to four course meal. So wow. he... I'm serious. He taught us how to be regal in many ways. Decorum. I, that's that's right. I remember the way a Persian <laughs> rugs. And I said one day, why do we have these rugs? Man, we should have wall-to-wall -wall carpet in this mm -hmm. house. And my mm -hmm. grandfather said, one day you'll understand what these wow. rugs are. So he taught us class. You know, you're born with class. It's not acquired. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. And then you had the opportunity to leave South Africa at a time at like the height of apartheid mm -hmm. and go and study in the States and you studied journalism mm -hmm. and mass communication. Mm, that's right. What was that experience like? It what was a an new world. What a new world and quite risky for the girl from the dusty, daring, dangerous streets of Soweto who just dared and left South Africa. How afraid were you? 
You know, funny time. enough, I was not afraid, but I remember I cried so much. And in this picture, there's a picture of me with little young people at the, at the airport. These were young people I used to teach ballroom dance to. I used to teach them yes, Latin American. Yes, because you were Yes, I was wow, a ballroom Because I said to myself, what, <laughs> what do I know? What can I do to teach young people, mm -hmm. keep them out of the streets and keep them occupied, teach them something that they possibly would love? And then I was a, 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 a model, a, a photographic model, yes. thanks to Merona Manye. And you still should be. <laughs> Thank you. At, at 29, you think it's still <laughs> good? Okay. But um, it, it was quite an honor. And then being one of the first black women to be a, a Lux model. Yes, yes. That's you were, right. You endorsed Lux. That's yes. right. So I had I remember a picture of you with a gorgeous little afro and foam uh, around face. me. When, no, the hair was pushed back, girl. It oh, pushed back, back, yeah. Yeah, with yeah. a little <laughs> Dolira Tabby bun at the back. But um, so anyway, I get to America and uh, I'm saying, okay, here am I in this foreign country. Uh -huh. Quite a scary experience, but I knew I was going, I was going to school. I knew what I wanted. I want to be somebody. I wanted an education. I knew that through education and exposure, I can beat apartheid. That's wow. literally, that was my, my, my weapon against apartheid. I don't know how many people know that in the 80s you uh, started at Radio Buputatswana, which was quite a controversial <laughs> move. Which was quite a controversial move. Tell us but why. Anything to get close like. to home. I felt being at Radio Bob and being part of the executive team that started TV Bob, I was close to my people. I was speaking Setswana, I was speaking even Afrikaans, I was speaking English, I was speaking Zulu. Yes, it, the politics of the country were quite interesting then. Yes. But I enjoyed imparting ideas, exchange of communication with people, doing the jazz show. And, and the odd my slogan was dance. the lady with a touch of class. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it, it, it was um, a heartwarming experience. Then I went back to the US and went to teach at the university there, went to work in the corporate world. It was always my dream to see wow. this girl wow. from Soweto standing in front of a, a, a class of white and black students imparting knowledge. That is it, so it was amazing. a dream seeing a girl from Soweto then walking the hallways of corporate America, seeing a girl at that time heading communications for the City Council of Atlanta. So it was quite an experience for wow. me. Wow. We have so much to talk about, but we're going to take a short break. And when we return, we'll chat about your career as a talk show host, your two books, so much more. Thank you, Vaughn. <laughs> awesome. More riveting talk when we return with Felicia Mabuza Sattel. Don't go away. Sustainable fishing that leaves fish for the future. Are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, before we get started on our recipe, if you are in Durban next weekend, then make sure you head down to the Good Food and Wine Show at the Durban Exhibition Centre. The show runs from the 30th of October to the 1st of November with international celebrity chefs, delicious fine dining dishes and award-winning wine. It promises to be an occasion for the senses. Now, make a stop at the SABC Theatre where some of the familiar SABC personalities will be doing their thing. And also the Baking Theatre where you'll be inspired by Salati's sweet creations. Tickets are only 90 rand each for adults and children under 12 get in for free. All right, Joy, we are now starting with delicious scallops, beautiful summer flavors. Oh. How do we begin? So today we are making an almond crusted um, scallops. So we're mm -hmm. gonna start off with our flour. Then here we've got sumac, which is Middle Eastern. Now tart. sumac, that's definitely yeah. the new in spice of the season. Sure. Why so? Is it new? Not really. It's been around. It's Middle Eastern. Okay. Um, it's very tart in flavor. Yeah. So we're just gonna mix this together. So if you're doing anything with sumac, your salads, your fish, it's it's a good spice to use. Okay. I mean, it's not very popular though in South Africa. No. 
Oh, but it even smells so amazing. Sure. It smells like something that you'd even want to put on chips, exactly. like a chip spice. No. Is it quite spicy? Not really. Okay. It's uh, it's tight. Um, tastes like lemon, if you if you want to put it that way. Okay. Yeah. So, so we've got our crumbs. Sure. We're just going to coat these uh, scallops. We're basically going to start off with our egg. And then how hot is it? Like a flash boiling fry? No, it's just a gentle fry. You don't want to burn the flour. Why did you decide to use almond flour as opposed to normal flour? We're looking for the nutty flavour in the, in the almond. Oh, delicious. Yeah. There you go. So what you're looking for here is a nice golden colour. I absolutely love scallops. And you can throw them in a salad or just have them on their own. They're amazing. Sure. There you go. There you go. Thank you. There you go. I'm quite a good chef, aren't I? <laughs> Thank you. And then how do you serve them? So basically we're going to hit this up because we've already made some. We've mm -hmm. got here veg juice. We're just going to add it. This is for our sauce. OK. And then we're going to add our butter. Just to stir. Do you mind tossing that salad for me, please? Sure. You got it. Make sure that's melted. Just and that's cook. going to serve as the dressing? That's going to serve as a dressing onto our scallops. Delicious. Would you like me to put the scallops on here anyway? Sure. We're going to use these. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. Remember that you can cook with us and find this recipe on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and actually the full shopping list and every single step as to how we've done it here in the kitchen will be online. And we've done it. We've done it, and we're just going to sprinkle it over. So this is just going to have a very fresh, lemony kind of flavour. Exactly. That's what you're looking for. Exactly. Joy, thank you so much. The summer salad looks absolutely Pleasure. delicious. I cannot wait to get stuck into it. But for now, Bonnie's back on the couch with Felicia Mabuza Sattel. So let's fast forward to 1992. South Africa is not familiar with the whole talk show format. And you arrive and you launch mm. the Felicia Mabuza Sattel show. Well, it's in the in, show that gets South Africa talking. That's right. But you know, when we first started, it was called Top Level. Um, that was. November 11th, 1992. The first show I remember was about internationals coming back home. All those South Africans who were living abroad coming back home. The people like uh, Mrs. Tam was on the panel, Mike Muendane, whatever. And we started discussing us coming back home. I remember distinctly what I was wearing, a red coat dress and kind of cream white stocking, so <laughs> not. Oh! <laughs> I hope the SABC does not play Have that one. Of... <laughs> oh my gosh. Because I... you heeded a call from <laughs> Nelson Mandela saying, um, come back to South Africa to yes. rebuild our new democracy. When he made that call to all South Africans living abroad, please come back home and come and serve your country. I was sitting on a couch that day uh -huh. and I said to my family, I think he's talking to, to me. Because you were married at that time. That's already. right, married, two children. They were still very young. And my husband has always said that you're the type that makes things happen. Oh, wow. You are a risk wow. taker. You, you, you don't hear the, the noise, the negative noise. You always are focused on what you believe will make a difference. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi puts it so well. He says, be yeah. the change you wish you to see, see in the world. Yes. And I think that's wow. how, what I'm trying to do. So Live profound. my life in such a way that I know I've made a small difference in my own little way. We are all geniuses in our own way. God is not in the mode of creating duplicates. You are an original, Bonnie. You are here for a purpose. You find that purpose and follow it with passion. Right, so from the woman who had the first talk show in South Africa mm -hmm. to me, advice. How do you make a great talk show host? I think believing in what you're saying, worrying about what you've brought those people in studio for. I'm going to give you an example here. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the talk show format came later when I convinced the SABC at that point that, listen, it's not about talking heads. It is about bringing black and white South Africans, young and old, 
able and challenged into that studio. Into to dialogue. Talk, yeah. Into dialogue. We were so scared of each other. We had lived apart for so many years. And this was the opportunity to bring us together to start talking. Mm -hmm. We had had over 40 years of apartheid that has separated us. I look at the people in the studio now together working with you. The Rainbow Nation is in the studio. So that's really what the show was all about. But back to what you're asking me, you said, what, what advice? Top advice, yes. Top advice. Top advice is be authentic and truly feel it. It's from the head, from the heart, from the hand. And I'll explain to you, integrity is key. Number two, feeling what the other person feels, caring. Empathy. It was not about glamour and glitter. In fact, I think sometimes my makeup was going a certain oh, direction. But you were so and they'll call glamorous. me and say, we have to, you, we you have to so fix, up, fix up your makeup. I said, no, no, let's go on. Let's I'm going to lose my on. train of thought. Let's, let's yeah. continue. So it, it was quite exciting. Your book, Live Your Dream, which is your second book. Uh -huh. And your first one was Dare to Dream. Dare to Dream. Mm -hmm. What are these series of books about? Well, first you see, I'm in uniform, mm -hmm. I'm in uniform. I see this, I, always, yeah, I, see this. I always do that when I'm you going to be talking colour. about it. You love that colour, it's gorgeous on you. I love the colour, it kind of brightens me. But the book really, Dare to Dream, was about my dream. As this girl from Soweto who wants to ultimately become somebody. This book is about your dream. I found the little nuggets, the lessons mm -hmm. of trying to get there. It's about your success. It's about taking that success you have right now and moving it to significance. Success is about self-empowerment. Significance is about empowering others. It is about giving back in many ways. I'm giving back little nuggets here. Many people say to me, can you please mentor me? I cannot mentor from far. I cannot mentor even when I'm here yeah. enough. So I decided to put all that mentoring in this in book. In this book. What That's, are some of the most profound moments you experienced while writing this book? I, I think at some point in your life, you ask yourself, what am I on this world for? Mm -hmm. And uh, my daughter sent me a text today about her guilt, about leaving her two-year-old for the first time and traveling away. She said, when I read the text, it says, I've just had a long conversation with Naya, who is two years old, yeah. about going to, that mommy is going to go on a plane alone and she's going to leave her at home with daddy and the mother-in-law. And, and I looked at this text, I was like, wow, you know, women really, we live with a lot of guilt, but it's her first time mm -hmm. away from the baby. So getting back to your question, you have to find those moments that make you start thinking. For me, I understood that, you know, I write something here in this book that says, your life is your purpose. Your story is important. We all have a story. Your dreams count. Your voice matters. You were born to make an impact. And I saw this quote somewhere, Tumblr, I think, or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And it lived with me ever since then. I made sure that that purpose I've been put here on earth for is carried out in some way. And it is mostly to uplift and help and power young people. That is why I started with that cultural center for young people. That is why in the 80s, I started a scholarship program for South African students uh, to come to the United States, study yes. there and come back home and serve. And I'm so proud to see what most of them are doing here. Are They're doing. entrepreneurs, they have MBAs, they have BAs, they have uh, uh, PhDs. They're teaching at universities, some of them are brand gurus, you know, it's, it's just it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, and yeah, I take my yeah. hat off to most of them. But I continue that journey. I'm still going on helping young people as best I can. You just have to have a passion 
and a purpose. And a, thank you so much. I've gleaned so much from just sitting here and basking under all this knowledge. It's thank been you such very an much. honor no, it's, having it's, you. It's been a pleasure, but I'm I really ask you to sign encourage my book as well. everybody to try and get this book. I call it a, a roadmap to help it. And as I said, Bonnie, it's not even about my dream, it's about their dream. We talk about things like how to dare to dream big, make sure your passion is your mission. We talk about Ubuntu, something that we should not forget. Young people should not forget. It is all about giving back in some way or other. Right. Not Staying away from negaholics, I can see that you know how to do that. Look at you. Look how you're <laughs> thriving right Took me a long right time to, to learn that. Right <laughs> and this is the diva in you. You're a diva, <laughs> divinely inspired, victoriously amazing woman. Oh, thank yes. you so much. Mark. Thank you, thank Bonnie. Thank you so much. And I'm going to sign it to the best diva in the world. <laughs> Now, if you'd like to get your hands on a copy of Live Your Dream, then pick up your phone now. We're giving away one copy of the book to a lucky viewer today. All you have to do is SMS the keyword books, your name, and city to 33728. SMSs cost 1 rand 50. T's and C's apply and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Sustainable fishing that leaves fish for the future. Are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express. His current one-man show, What the EFF, is heading to Durban in November. Joining us on the couch is comedian Nick Rabinovitz, and with him are the creator and director of the popular satire news show, Zar News, Thierry Casuto and Alex Finn, which has recently been nominated for an international Emmy. Now, if they win, Zar News Puppet Nation will be the first ever a South African production to win an International Comedy Emmy. Firstly, congratulations, that is huge. How did you find out about the nomination? Thank you. Well, personally, I found out I was actually in the States. I was traveling, I was uh, on a business trip to the US, yeah. <clears throat> trying to uh, make Puppet Nation go global. We're planning on a global invasion of our puppets um, and the first landing will be in New York. So we learned, I learned about it personally in New York on that Monday morning, and I got a long email that all it said was, ooh, <laughs> from our head of production at the office, who was just screaming her uh, head out. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been such an incredible feeling. What is it about um, Puppet Nation and Zanis that has got this global appeal? I think the puppet search fantastic. There's yeah. something um, with the, the, the flesh of the puppets, the way they make you become children again, because it's fantastic to interact with puppets. And then at the same time, they make you suspend your disbelief. You forget that they're puppets. Yes. And so this, this double thing that's happening that's make, that, that makes this medium magical, that yeah. 3D animation cannot match. Exactly. And, and then when you add the magic of Nick's voice, of Agri Lanaki's voice, of Nicky Jackman's voice, of the Snade Lila's voice, then it becomes just uh, fantastic. I think this show is so well put together. It, it's, it's, it's gotten rave reviews from international trade and uh, consumer press that I think we stand a chance. And what we need mostly is on the day a bit of Madiba magic and a mm -hmm. bit of Trevor Noah magic, uh, because right now that's New York is, he's the king of New York right now. If he could just help us a bit. Trevor, love you. <laughs> Fantastic. He's definitely watching Afternoon Express. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> now, of course, Trevor Noah magic, Mativa magic, but also Nick Rabinovitz. I mean, what the F? <laughs> what the EFF is now playing in Durban. Yeah, it's actually the start of a national tour, and uh, Durban is one of the first places. Exactly. And then you're going to be going across the country. What can, what can you know, your fans and, and lovers of what the EFF experience? Lovers of comedy, comedy lovers and lovers who don't necessarily love comedy but weren't <laughs> sure what to do that particular night <laughs> should come. What can um, they expect? What can they expect? Well, it's a comedy show, so hopefully they can expect to laugh. Otherwise, there's going to be a problem. And, uh, and people have toy toyed because uh, despite what the title suggests, it actually is not entirely about the EFF. Okay. And, uh, and some so what disgruntled is it about? people. I want have, to know from the beginning. You know, what is it about? They Julius jokes, and, they, and then, well, you, I'm not going to pay back the money if that is the case. They can. 
Yeah, yeah. good. So it's about all sorts of things that make uh, that make us say what what the f. Um, for example, um, load shedding. That's we we haven't had load shedding for for, for a I long know, time. I know, thankfully. Um, I speak about the Dalai Lama. I speak about visiting China and learning Mandarin, um, which I've never done. But various other things as well. I think that's been like one of your greatest successes and also Forza News and the Puppet Nation. Now, do you think if you guys do move overseas, like you were saying, doing the global domination with the puppets, do you think that you will then expand to go to international puppets or, or figures as well? Definitely. Yeah, we already have a couple of international puppets. Oh, who do you have? Who's new oh, on the cards? Plenty. We have Obama, Chris Christie, David Cameron. There's, there's Justin plenty. Bieber. Yeah, well, Justin Donald Bieber, Trump. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Kim Kardashian. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. Of course, our very own Charlize. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Theron. Okay, and yep. you broadcast online at the moment, but will there be any other broadcasts to the States? We're online and we're also on YouTube. So in America, people do watch the US clips that we do. Okay, what is your rating system like? Or what, what, what are your hits like from the U US um, fans? From the US fans, it's still small. We have a small website called puppetnation.com and a YouTube channel, which is Puppet Nation USA. It, right now, it's just for trial purposes and also sh to show the networks, to show the cable channels, our metal, or our latex, rather. And, uh, uh, so far, it's business to business. It's not business to consumer. So I can't really say that it's had uh, millions of hits. Our show gets millions of hits, but the Puppet Nation USA version still is low. All but right. 2016 is the big year. It's the election of course. year. And so yeah. we have Hillary and Bill, by the way. Oh, mm -hmm. lovely. And next week, we're introducing <laughs> George and Jeb Bush. Brilliant. Well, best of luck. And I'm really going to be holding thumbs for the two of you. Bring home that Emmy. And I hope yes. you both get to go. Nick, good luck for What The F. Where can people buy tickets? Where can they catch you? Uh, well, tickets are f through Competicket. Mm -hmm. And I'll be at the Snedden Theatre in Durban from the 2nd of November. Brilliant. Durban's great. I'm going there tomorrow. All right, Durban, get ready for Nick Rabinovitz. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. But for now, let's head back to Barney in the Kitchen. Have you ever dreamed of eating a chocolate-inspired three-course meal? Well, dream no more because we've invited Michaela van der Marvo, pastry chef de party, into the loft to make a starter, main and dessert, all inspired by chocolates from the Lindt Creation range. After all, whoever said chocolate was only for dessert? Welcome, Michaela. Thank you for having me. What is a pastry chef de party? What I basically do is I oversee some of the junior staff and then I obviously work under the big guys in the kitchen. And then I have to produce all the pastry products, obviously with my team, with the whole team assisting me. And then we just go from there. It sounded really, really fancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've got some Lindt creations over here and they've inspired this three course meal. Please take us through it. Okay, so for my starter, I love duck. So any chance that I get, I'll always cook duck and yeah. beetroot as well, one of mm -hmm. my favorites. So divine hazelnut chocolate. I decided to use a duck breast, um, just pan seared crispy and then Hazelnuts on the side, hazelnut crumbs, and then a chocolate jus that goes with it. Oh, that's incredible. So the jus is that little the, sauce. The sauce on yes. the side. Yes. Awesome, wonderful. And here we have our main course. Okay, so for the mains, I did a farm trout. I did some asparagus with it on the side, and then some orange gel, some oyster emulsion, and then it's just a simple lim lemon vinegar. Sorry. Oh, wow. This Can I just over here. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. So just sprinkle it on the side, just as a sauce. This dresses the fish as well as all the salad on the side. And then that's the main course. Is, that, is the chocolate in the vinaigrette? No, there's no chocolate in the vinaigrette. But it's in the, this little... No, it's just yellow. the flavours that just just the come flavors. through. It, the lemon right. flavour okay. coming through. I get it. And now for dessert. Okay, so for dessert, I did a dark chocolate torte and then it's gluten-free as well. So. Mm. I used the orange for my inspiration as well. I think chocolate and orange goes very well, and then cherries goes quite well with yeah. chocolate as well. This looks absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to taste it. 
Thank you so much, Michaela, for your lovely creations. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Today, we're giving three lucky viewers the chance to win a dreamy lint creation hamper as well as a yuppie chef online course voucher. All you need to do is reply to our Facebook and Twitter posts and let us know how you'd include lint creation to your favorite meal. After the break, we're back in the loft with the Czar News team and they've brought a few special guests. We also chat to hip-hop artist Altido. Surrender to indulgence. Which will you give in to first? Creation from the Lint Master Chocolatier. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, with the Springboks scraping through against Wales over the weekend, preparations are almost complete for the semi-final against New Zealand tomorrow. Joining us in the loft to discuss the competition so far is Springbok luck Victor Matfield Hi. and Sports Minister Fakile Mabulele. Welcome. Mbalula. It is Mbalula. Mbalula. Yes, Welcome. Jenny, you got it. Thank you very much. So, what can we expect tomorrow? We've got the Springboks and the All Blacks. Victor, you may or may not be playing. Yeah. What I, is happening? Jeannie, uh, I will see how I feel on the day. You know, I uh, have been banding ahead of the game. And if I feel like uh, Dr. Professor Noakes says I can play, then I will. Excellent. What was your injury exactly? Uh, you know, I was just, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. You just weren't feeling up to it. Yeah, and ready that's to. it. That's, that's okay. what the doctors say. Okay. Fantastic. Well, what do you think should be an outcome this weekend? Uh, Ginny, I would just like to say firstly that you look mellifulous. Delicious, delightful, <laughs> and uh, almost as uh, as uh, tasty and uh, amazing as my favorite Beyonce. You are number two, but Beyonce <laughs> is number one. Thank you very much. Uh, I took a selfie with her. Did you see it? I tweeted it. I haven't seen your selfie oh, with Beyonce. It? Can I take one with you later? Ne? Absolutely. I'd yeah. love to have a selfie with you. Uh, to answer the question, I think our boca are going to show... Uh, the old blacks, that we are a nation of winners! <laughs> We are. We absolutely are. But I think, you know, if you look at the game last weekend, uh, there was a headline in a British newspaper that said South Africa just did what South Africans do best. And that's exactly that. It's coming in and winning at the yes, last minute. Yes. Also, as we have shown, we have been doing a whaling for many years. I've been to the whaling place in uh, Saldana uh, or somewhere. And uh, we have been catching whales and uh, destroying Wales for centuries. Exactly. Um, but what about the game? Yeah, the game we are going to show New Zealand that uh, a nation of sheep farmers, in fact, there are more sheep than farmers, cannot destroy the Springboks. Fall into Boca! Morella Boca! Fall into! <laughs> now, do you think you can give us any inside tips? Like, or like what kind of tactics are the team looking at to actually tackle the yeah, Blacks? Yeah, you know, Jeannie, Aini, um, and the guys from the Bulls, we're just going to play like the bulls, I mean the <laughs> boca. Uh, we are going to just, you know, go out there and, yeah, do it. Overall, what's been your support? What's the support been like in the UK? How have you been uh, received? Uh, we say it's like a home game away, or a away game home, uh, uh, something like that, <laughs> yeah. Yes, if I can just add here, because Victor is sometimes short of words, unlike me. Uh, it's going to be a mellifluous, uh, undeniably stunning occasion to showcase our wonderful nation, and we will do it with a Matipa magic, but we will do it with razzmatazz, <laughs> because I will talk to the boys and inspire them. What kind of inspirational words do you think you will be saying to I will be quoting a whole song of Beyonce. <laughs> Flawless! That is how they are going to play. <laughs> Flawless! <laughs> All right. Well, any words of support that you would like to give the nation before you guys head out there? Yeah, I'd just like to say thanks for all the support back home to the guys. And, um, yeah, just, you know, support the team and, um, 
yeah, shout loud and tell uh, Craig Jupe not to come to the game. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank it's you, been, Ginny. Been... And uh, for and Dupaka, can you just say it for me? For and Dupaka? For and Dupaka. Murala. <laughs> Murala. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for chatting to us. Right now, though, Bonnie's on the couch with our next guest. <laughs> His career kick-started in 2009 when he self-released, self-marketed and hand-to-hand -hand distributed his critically acclaimed mixtape around Johannesburg, which led to a number of award nominations. Now he's one of South Africa's hottest recording hip-hop artists. Joining us on the couch is Altido. Welcome to The Laugh, Altido. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Now your real name is Tato Matonzela, and you say that if you had to tell us how you got the name Altido, mm -hmm. you would lose a lot of street cred. No, nah, Do you want to take that. the risk? Nah, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> uh, my street cred is intact, by the way. So, um, oh yeah. <laughs> basically, that's, that's what, clear. Okay, yeah, cool. what I did is, um, like my real name, like you said, is Tato. And then my other name, which, okay, that's fine, let's mention it, is Lloyd, okay? Okay. <laughs> so, um, Tato, in the hood, if you like Oscar, they'll call you Oskido. If you like Tabo, they'll call you Tibos. Okay. So they took my name Tato, and they said Tito. Okay. And then the L's for the Lloyd, so together it's like L, Tito, oh, basically. Lloyd, Tito. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's yeah. simple. I yeah. think your street cred is still intact. Now, you Gorgeous. launched your career in 2009, one of the very few yeah. independent artists in yeah. South Africa, and you were received with great applause. Yeah. Why the, the route to go independent? I, I just think, like, like I said, the independent thing, I don't think it's for everybody. Like, um, yeah. I'm very hands-on with everything that I do, so it can work for me. Um, I want to know everything that's going on. Other people are just musicians, wow. and I've seen with my friends, they're just musicians and they want to do that, but um, I'm much more than a musician, you know. I, like, I'm an entrepreneur. I, like, I also believe in my product, so, like, I studied marketing too, so I guess right. it, it, it played a role in actually me pushing myself and everything, and uh, people think, like, uh, Tito has, like, a big I don't even have, like, a big, big team like to actually push whatever we're doing uh -huh. it's just me and my ideas and my manager Tabo uh, we both just grinding it out basically yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome well you've done really well as an independent artist and won many awards uh -huh. so in 2010 uh -huh. you got awarded the best newcomer award before even releasing an album that must have yeah. been quite affirming yeah man that was that was that was dope because um, I was like also like what what I loved about that situation was like um, I've always been for artists that always believe like South Africans should get with like people from Nigeria, Kenya and whatever. So um, I won like best newcomer in Africa, you know? Wow. So, 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 and then since then I've been doing collabs with African artists and I've seen like right now, so many artists in SA are doing collabs with, with people in Africa and it's like a beautiful situation, especially since we are facing things like xenophobia and everything else. Right, so it's, right. it's, it's, it's a good place to see artists collaborating together. Yeah. Now you were born and raised in Alex mm. and you say that you take Alex everywhere with you. Yeah. How has Alex influenced your path and your music? I, I, like I think most of all, like there's not uh, so many heroes or like role models coming from where I'm from and Alex, you can literally count them in one hand that, that are known out there and doing their thing. Right. So I feel like uh, it's my responsibility too to hold up Alex because the kids out there need the heroes, you know, they need, yeah. to, they need to know that they can make it out from wherever they're from. You know, so many people ask, oh, are you from Alex? I'm like, yeah, because um, it seems like, I don't know, this, kids don't think because you're from that background that you can make it wherever you want to make it. And it's yeah. possible. So that's why I always represent Alex for the fullest. I mean, even almost every single, like, maybe I have, like, I've shot, like, my videos, like, probably, like, five times in Alex. Yeah. Um, I'll go to schools in Alex to speak to the kids there. So, yeah, man, like... Yeah. I think it's shaped me to be the type of person I am, like, right now. Yeah, yeah. speaking of things that have shaped you, who are some of your role models and why? I think um, I get different influences from different people. Like, my mom, I can get, um, like, different things from her because she's, like, a very strong woman. She raised me alone, so, like, I look up to her on wow. that regard. Props to mom. Yeah, and then, like, you look up to artists like Jay-Z as an entrepreneur. He, he did the music thing and he turned it into a business. Right. So I look up to him. With, with those type yeah. of things. I look up to DJ Spoo for him, like, breaking the boundaries and, and, and doing his thing and, like, coming up with different, different energy drinks and everything, reasons. yeah, for yeah, different reasons. Yeah. So I don't want to look up to one person because okay. 
Yeah. That makes sense. Set you up for disappointment. What yeah. is this beef culture mm. in, in, in hip hop? Yeah. Do, is, does there have to be beef? Is it, is it a way of garnering more publicity? Mm. Or is it just that it's easier for beef to accumulate in the, the hip hop industry? It, and please comment yeah. on some of the running beefs okay, that cool. we have mm. in South Africa. I, I, I think a lot of people actually look at hip hop and like, oh, why is there so much beef? Like, people need to actually sit back and think. In normal life, just besides hip hop, people have misunderstandings. And hip hop is also very competitive. So those type of situations will happen in that happen. type of environment. And yeah, like beefs, <laughs> I, I don't know what more I can say, but yeah. unfortunately, it, it, and hip hop is very vocal. Like other very genres, other genres might, might have beef, but they will never bring it to the forefront and say, yo, this is how I feel about this type of okay. artist. Hip hop, if you don't like someone, you say it there, like, yo, I don't like this guy, I think right, he's whack. Right. And the, mm. Well, you're gonna perform live for us. You're yeah. gonna perform La La Gayon, all right? Uh -huh. Lots of gorgeous women in that music video. <laughs> Lots uh <-huh>. of pressure. Uh -huh. <laughs> How do you keep yourself level-headed? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I just, I think I just do me. Um, I just, I, I just do me the best way I can awesome. do it. So I don't, awesome. I don't try to be someone who I'm not. I guess that's why I, I was just stay me. The same Lovely. Guy. Yeah. Well, after the break, El Tito performs for us in the loft. So make sure you stay right where you are. We'll be back. Apply for a Nedbank home loan today and stand a chance to win 100,000 rands worth of home decor to help turn your new house into a dream home. Go to winnerhome.tv for more info. Let Nedbank help you make the things that really matter happen. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, don't miss Winner Home, the design edition, tonight on SABC3 at 7.30 p.m. to stand a chance of winning. Coming from the kitchen out onto the patio, the contestants have really gone from the frying pan into the fire. Given carte blanche to create an inviting and striking patio setting, they get to extend their creative concepts to the great outdoors. With Jackie and Zamkita as team champions and a guaranteed place in the final three, the heat is turned up on Team Blueprint as another contestant faces elimination and they get closer to finding their team champion and a shot at winning 100,000 Rand. Once again, you can vote to stand a chance to win a luxury villa at Ilala Ridge in Umschlange, Durban. Competition closes on the 1st of November, so make sure you don't miss a single episode of Winner Home every Friday. Winner Home is brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Winner Home The Design Edition is the only show on South African television that truly lives up to its name. Enter online at winnerhome.tv or via SMS for the weekly viewer's prize and put yourself in line to win a two-bedroom apartment on Durban's prestigious Umtlanga Ridge, an exclusive luxury car or 50,000 rands worth of home appliances. That's Winner Home, Friday nights at 7.30, repeat Saturdays at 4.30. Find it on 3. Now, if there's one thing I love more than a hip hop track is one that's being performed live in the loft. Put your hands together for El Tito performing <laughs> Gala Cayon. <laughs> Yeah, the way I'm fucking like a damn baby girl, you the one, you the one. She asked me to buy her a drink, I just nodded and told her. Uh, I spent the money to you, baby, that's a you want. I'm got Jalaka, Jalaka, uh, I'm got Jalaka, yo. I'm got Jalaka, Jalaka, yeah. I'm got Jalaka, yo. I'm got Jalaka, Jalaka, uh, I'm got Jalaka, yo. I'm usually on the ground for the checks and guap. So keep on my baby as I run past my block. Drop my game like, can I get your math or not? Cause I can take you to the moon like an astronaut. And I know my wind town, and I was a blooming cast down. Show you a couple things, Jack will fucking thrust down. I saw one and one I saw on that time. Face like Beyonce, ass like a black man. 
Five on my side's where you gotta be. Got me making moves. I ain't talking choreography. You know me. Smooth talker and the grandma ear. So I had to fall like she's standing on banana peels. Whoa. Most of them tournaments, she kind of look like Beyonce. Beyonce. The way up again like a damn baby girl, you the one. You the one. She asked me to buy her a drink, I just nodded and told her. Let's go. Let's go. I ain't no money, so you bring that ass up, give up. I'm good. Yellow guy. Yellow guy. How can I tell a guy, yo? I'm good. Yellow guy. Yellow guy. Yeah. How can I tell a guy? Yeah, how can I tell a guy? Tell a guy. Yeah, how can I tell a guy? How can I tell a guy? Tell a guy. Oh, how can I tell a guy? Where my heart? This room is dead, Zibasadi. But I'm man, baby, you the life for the party. Where my How you fit them jeans in your body? Damn, you gon' make a player on Temahadi. I know you probably think it got fun, and I'm only saying that to get you my fun. Well, um, that's kind of true. I just tell it how it is. I'm that kind of dude. Baby, I need you, but when do you have to more? Yeah, you look good, I'm a fan, I'm a ring, I'm more. Me, I can take you from Josie to Singapore and give you whatever you like. I'm making a show. Most of them fun, but she kind of look like Beyonce. The way up again, like a damn baby girl, you the one. You the one. She asked me to buy her a drink. I just nodded and told her. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No money Let's to you, baby. Let's go. Come on. 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 Come Love that. Absolutely brilliant. We're living the hip-hop right here in Afternoon Express, homie. <laughs> That's pretty fair for a white girl, Judy. Thank you. <laughs> Don't forget, if you want to win an amazing Lint creation and yuppie chef hamper, simply reply to our Facebook and Twitter posts and let us know how you would include a Lint creation chocolate to your favourite meal. Oh, I just want to include a Lint chocolate creation to, to last, every yeah. meal. <laughs> Make sure you join us for Afternoon Express next Monday and tune in early because in the first 15 minutes, we'll be on the couch with former front lady of the hit band Clout, Cindy Alter, and in the kitchen, we're making a raspberry and rose meringue cake with a honey custard yummy. But I'm already thinking about next week's delicious dishes when we first have to get through this one. Now, Joy was not much of a talker, but my goodness, he can cook. He's good How delicious hands. are these scallops? I'm going to serve for you. I love so scallops. You can eat them. Yummy, him. Hmm? Yeah, we've had some amazing guests in the loft today. We loved having Felicia Mambuza Sattle in the loft. And we had an entire minister, Fikile Mbalula. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and you said you were He's better British. than Beyonce or the other way around. No, I'm an only a number two to Beyonce. Uh, and that's why two. we're not serving him food anymore. I had to kick him out of the loft. <laughs> Sorry, minister. But Victor Matfield was also amazing. Yeah, yeah. But until next week, have a beautiful weekend. Happy eating. Ciao. Next week on Afternoon Express, we take a look at the darker side of social media. Veteran actor Marius Veyas joins us on the couch and Durban-based group Gangs of Ballet treat us to an exclusive acoustic performance. Another feel-good production. Hi, YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.